Hey everyone, so I just kind of showed you how to work through and make sense of uh, the visualizations. And I did a couple of things that I want to kind of just point back to because I think if you haven't interacted with that video and you jump into this video, it could get confusing pretty quick. So I want to just re reiterate that if you aren't sure how the icons are working, uh, go back and review that. And also if you're not sure about how to turn on the labels, again, you're going to want to use um, this key right here. If you want to turn the labels off for each node, you can click the home button. All right. So again, this is Chief Burke's data visualization. This is a subset of data within a larger interview. And so I've sought to visualize the practices that he mentioned that he utilized while he's working at a structure fire. So in terms of the two data sets that I visualized, one of the things that I've, I've selected to do is to compare um, some interview data with some observational data. And I've also made a choice to choose uh, an individual who works as a chief in isola isola who works as a chief officer in more of a supervisory and managerial role in comparison to in orderville the next visualization a crew working at a scene so this juxtaposes some pretty distinct aspects of the data that i think are kind of notable and worth kind of getting at um, right off the bat, when we look at this visualization, you're going to see that there is a good bit of purple and also a lot of visual and a fair amount of like the light blue cognitive uh, modalities that are present. I also see oral and red off of one of the clusters, um, the green and the red. So there's a lot of listening and, and kind of talking going on or sound and, and speech or occupying a, an important role off that specific node. I also see that there's communicative um, work that's kind of bunched and clustered off of sp specific nodes, where I see mediational work occurring off of other nodes as well. Those are, again, the knotted, knotted things. So that's one of the really interesting things when we start to pull the segments of work together and look at things. Um, you can kind of see how there's like a cognitive part of work occurring maybe in a certain place and more communicative work together. But you also will see things like this where it's, I believe this is going to be our radio communications. Yes, it is. And we're seeing that there's some, um, some other mediational aspects. So off the radio communications, we aren't, Chief Burke isn't just simply using those um, to send messages. He's also listening and using those to think about what's going on. So for instance, he's evaluating the reports from crews, and he's also evaluating the tone of the speaker. If people seem hyped up, he might say, okay, that person or that crew seems like they're encountering something that's pretty serious, and I might need to you know, take that bit of information in a different regard than I would otherwise. Um, additionally, just off this node, this is the radio communications node. So everything that links to it has something to do with radio communications. We have evacuation alert tones. We have size up, which is a genre that he's going to communicate. We have notifications. So you might call a utility company to say, hey, turn off. Um, the power, for instance, so that while well, folks are tearing walls down, they're not going to get exposed to live electricity. Um, we have evacuation order, so he might call for this kind of, that's again another kind of genre. Um, and he also might call for a personnel accountability or report from crews. Additionally, that links back the radio comms to the observe link. So he's mediationally observing the radio communications. Um, and there's specific examples. Again, when we look at these mediational aspects of, of observing that he's listening to and taking sense of, making sense of the reports he's receiving, the information in those reports, as well as the tone. Off of this, so let's go back to the center again. I kind of jumped right in to a kind of zoomed in look at something that's significant here. But I want to also just kind of back up again and just say, like, how is this 
specific visualization organized. So at the center of it, we have Chief Burke doing one key task. He's incident, uh, managing an incident. And this particular incident is a structure fire he's recalling. And so from that, there's three main aspects of practice. He's doing observation, he's segment. So we have an observational segment where Chief Burke is trying to make sense of what's going on and just keep track of it. There's a communication segment and there's also a planning segment. So it makes sense if we're planning that a lot of that's gonna occur in that kind of planning mediational role. So that's why all of that whole segment is dotted. And also off of the communication node, we note that we have a lot of communicative, dark, non-dotted lines. So what are some of the communications? So off of that communicate node, notice that there's two sub levels, the radio comms node that we walked through already, and then the communication, interpersonal communication node. So this is one of the things that I've done with a lot of these visualizations is when a certain segment gets a little bit unruly, I think about how can we break that into two or how can we break that into another level. So off of our communicate node, we have two sub-segments, the interpersonal sub-segment and the radio comms. Notice that around that these, we also have things in all caps. So incident management, which is our center node, and the key subsegments, observe, communicate, and plan, are also in all caps. So if you're seeing all caps, chances are it's that, unless it's an acronym. All right, so off communication, we have the interpersonal. What is Chief Burke doing as an interpersonal communicator? He might be pushing and pulling crews, which is tactile and kinesthetic. He might be making jokes, oral and visual. He might be jokes, oral and oral, not visual. He might be using gesture, kinesthetic and visual. He might be uh, sounding the evacuation, making order to have an evacuation so the air horns might be going off. And he might be engaging in face-to-face -face communication. And then finally, off the observational node, we have collapse zone, we have floor plans, architecture, structural integrity, building construction, reading smoke, and a 360. So here's a whole set of practices that Chief Burks uses to read and collect information. Note that there are some of those practices that connect specifically to the radio, but what we have here is a whole set of practices that allow us to make sense of, and a lot of them really pertain to what's going on with the building because it's a structure fire where if it collapses is it going to collapse i'm making sense of the space how far away crews might need to be what's the floor plan if this is a ranch i might know that the bedrooms are likely to be here if this is an apartment complex i might know that the master you know bedroom could be there if i'm familiar with that apartment complex and how it's been designed. If there's a certain kind of architecture, I might realize that there's certain kinds of hazards. For instance, parapet walls tend to look like um, you have a roof way up to the top, but then actually below that wall, if you get above it, you can see that there's a, a big gap. If you put a ladder and you don't look before you go over that ladder over the top of the roof, you could go for a fall. So. You know, as a chief officer, that person is trying to make a sense of what risks are there, and they're using visual keys of arch architecture and structural integrity and things like that to, to determine and, and identify risk. Uh, so there's a whole set of knowledge that that person's bringing to bear on, um, on that, that observational activity. And it's folding back into planning, and so we see this as really probably reflexive, um, highly connected work a lot of shifting and evolving as, as we move through an incident. Thank you for your time thinking about that. Bye.